Well, good evening and welcome to the online footy show on your Wednesday evening. Looking forward to a big weekend of football nipple action this weekend. And I say a very good evening to the great man, Trenny Hill. Hilly, how are you, buddy? Yeah, going well, Matt. Uh, terrific to have another weekend of Hampton League footy coming up. And we saw some great games on the weekend. Really right, looking forward did. to dissecting some of those. Some, some really great performances. None bigger than the Warrnambool Blues over North Warrnambool Eagles. A, a great performance all round. Yeah, absolutely it was. And it was the Blues' first win of 2022. And I, I think it was a win that nobody probably saw coming because Eagles were coming off the back of a loss to Karoy. We thought they were going to come out, obviously, steely and, uh, and pretty pumped up. And, and they did, but uh, the Blues just served it up to them all day. We will get to that later. We've got plenty of highlights to go through. We've got all our awards to get through as well. But I wanted to get through our guests. This week's match of the day on Hamden League Live is going to be between the Cobb Cobden Bombers and the Port Ferry Seagulls down at the Cobden Recreation Reserve. It's going to be our first look at both these teams in 2022. And Hilly, I'm pretty excited to be honest. Yeah, I am too. Two are young sides. And obviously there's been a lot of you know talk about uh, Cobden being a really young side under new coach Dan Casey. And then the Seagulls obviously probably haven't had their best lineup on paper yet. Still very young. But I know that they're starting to get some, back, some of their stars back. Sully, Harwood and the like. So... I'm expecting uh, Port Ferry to be more competitive, really competitive over the next few weeks anyway, once they get a bit more of their uh, experience back in the lineup. And the Bombers had a fantastic win against uh, the Camden Magpies. Under lights in that close, fierce rivalry between those teams and the Port Ferry Seagulls looking for their first victory in season 2022. Let's go to the Zoom now. We'll go to the coach of the Cobb, the Bombers, and Dan Casey, who's been kind enough to join us. And Case... Uh, looking magnificent in the library tonight, mate. Uh, there's a few too many books for my liking uh, behind you there, but uh, you obviously spent a bit of time there, mate, uh, being a coach. Oh, 100%. How are you, fellas? Um, yeah, just sitting in my wife's office. Um, but definitely not mine. <laughs> yeah, we need to know what's behind me. Hey, <laughs> hey, Case, uh, wonderful to see you back in the hand of the Football Netball League. Uh, you know, like you, you've obviously been involved at Camp and, uh, you know, you've coached Irrawarra Biak, uh, Colac Football Club. You've had a, a wonderful career. You had that bad accident, of course, where you took off virtually half your foot, mate. Um, you know, it's just awesome to see you back in the competition and, and really something that you're passionate about is developing kids. And you're doing that, and you've got a list of Cobden that you're really enjoying, mate. Yeah, definitely. Look, it's awesome to be back in this league. It's um, obviously got plenty of um, plenty of mates um, still playing, um, and it's yeah the only time you really get to catch up with these guys is um, when you play against them. So it's um, exciting, and um, yeah, like it, the list we've got um, at Cobden, just it is an exciting list. It's up and coming, and um, I think I was just saying here before the, um, we started, it was just they just listen, um, and that's probably the main thing is. Um, yeah, they're going to stuff up every now and again, but when you can talk them through and show them what they, where, where we need to improve in that, they just, yeah, they love it. So, um, yeah, it's, it is an exciting time there. So, Hey, Case, from week one to, I guess, week three, how much improvement have you seen in that playing list? I guess adapting to your game style, but just having that senior experience, well, I guess a few raw youngsters. Yeah, it's just more confidence, really. Um, so um, during the pre-season, just let them go and train and, seeing what we need to work on and put our um, our spin on it, I suppose. Um, and one thing we noticed is they just weren't confident enough in like pulling the trigger, I suppose, is the best um, to say. It's, um, they've got so many strengths and um, if we keep like, trying to, um, I suppose, curb that and not let them play to their strengths, they um, lose their confidence really quickly. So we've just been... Pumping them like just going. If you you back yourself, kick a goal from forty, you do it. Like you just back yourself and try and hit them kicks and things like that. No one's gonna yell at you or anything. So what we found is more numbers are coming to train, and because of that, um, it's a great place to be around. Um, so at the moment, the weather's been perfect. I know Saturday is going to be pretty crappy weather, but um, yeah, everything so far has been fantastic. Um, yeah, numbers are great. Yeah, their performance is yeah. Saturday night was pretty good like we kicked pretty terribly in front of goal which is rare but um our field kicking there really was spot on so um so far so good and we've got a tough test Saturday again so and case what have you seen um you know what's the difference you've been out of the hand of the football netball league for a few years now um you know from an outsider coming back into the competition and, and I don't know it's only a small window you've seen at the moment but how, how do you see the hand of the football netball league yeah I look it's I've been involved in the GFL, it's really quick. Um, but what I find in the Hamley, it's quick, but it's it's still like a um, like contest as well. Um, and 
the crowd and everything like that. Like it, the more people come and watch it, and um, it's more of a community, community kind of event. That's what I love is um, just everyone gets out on a sad day and come watches their team play. And like Cobham's got a huge following, um, and we've had two big games to start with. With South, South's crowd was huge, and then yeah, the Portland game, which I wasn't there. Um, apparently, it was a good night down there, and then last Saturday night was good at camping down. So. Um, yeah, look at these. It's a fantastic league, and as I said, it's just great that like, just great people that are involved in it. So we're happy to see it back. That's for sure. Case, hey, Case. I guess it's always hard to know, um, you know, how long to spend at a footy side. But have you got like a, a plan in place? Like, is it a two-year plan, a three-year plan? I know it was sort of unexpected for you to come back into the coaching ranks in the Hampton League. I know you had a lot of, uh, you know, communication through Cobden to try and get you over and. They got you in the end. So do you see this as a two- to three-year plan to try and get Cobden and build up those youngsters to, uh, to a, I guess, a, a style that's capable of playing regular finals footy? Yeah, well, the, the aim is to get the group, um, I suppose, this year, because recruiting was really hard. It was more developing what we've got. Um, and then next year, we will try and get Cobden people back to the club. And then we've got, like, you, you look at people who are playing at Colo, like Brady Marnie, and that, like, they've still got plenty of footy left in them. Um, and Jake Evans has taken over the assistant role and Louis Carl as well. So they want to get awesome. into senior coaching. Um, so I, I, look, I look, kind of look at it as a mentoring role, really. Like um, uh, I always say to Jake, if he's got an idea, don't hold it in, get it out. And um, it's usually the right idea, um, the first one that comes to your head. So um, look, I, I, he wants to do it and he's got plenty of um, enthusiasm and everything. So it's... Um, yeah, look, if he, if he puts his hand up at the end of this year and goes, oh, I want to be the senior coach, like I'm, I'm not going to stand in his way either. So um, it's more, yeah, I mean, just love developing the kids and um, this has probably been the best group I've had in like a yeah, um, senior junior group. Um, you kind of can't really call them really senior footballers yet because they only really played 50-odd games, a lot of them. Um, so, yeah, look, it's exciting. It's just what you go to coach footy for, really. It's not... Uh, I've been lucky enough to play in premierships, but like now it's building the team to try and get that journey again. Um, it's a good story to tell. So, um, yeah, so that's what you know, the plan is anyway. So, Hey, mate, you obviously coached at the Aurora BAC and you had that affiliation with, uh, you know, the superstar Wayne Henry Robertson, a Maskell medal winner. Now you get a chance to uh, coach his son, young Henry, who made his debut a couple of weeks ago. That must have been a special feeling, obviously, having that affiliation and, um, I guess, friendship with Wayne. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, Henry's always like every year um, been in contact. Um, yeah, every time I've coached, and especially the Awara, like he was always in, in contact, and it was kind of good to take over the hard work he did um, and follow on from that. Um, and now, yeah, seeing these two young boys, um, they're all pushing up for seniors, and yeah, obviously Henry's got some serious wheels and um, yeah, good skills. So it's good to actually. Yeah, coach him. Um, and um, yeah, he's, he's played two fantastic games for us already. So yeah, looking forward to what he can do this year. So. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing him. I've heard big raps on the kid and uh, his old man's a superstar and a great fella as well. And um, yeah, he, he is a, a beauty by all accounts. So really looking forward to seeing him on the weekend. It's a wonderful club, the Cod the Bombers. They're a proud club. Um, you know, and you touched on it, mate. They're passionate. They get out. They support and all that kind of stuff, which is just wonderful to see. Hey, uh, listen, uh, one of the books, mate. What's the, what's your go-to book over your shoulder case before we let you go, mate? <laughs> Bit of the Karma Sutra over there, or what? What do you got uh, for us? There's no uh, colouring books or anything behind me, so I'm, <laughs> I'll struggle. Um, yeah, these are all Siobhan's, um all their PhD books and stuff, so they're way far over my head, mate. So I just move them each time you have to move here. So I just pack them up and move them and set them up again. Hey, uh, good on your case. Looking forward to seeing you on Saturday, mate. And uh, we wish you all the best of luck, and we'll talk to you in the pregame. No worries. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Dan Casey there, the coach of the Cod the Bombers. He's a ripper. He's a good man. He's a great fella. Likes a joke too. Uh, remember that time, Hilly, we uh, we sucked him in with the, uh, the goal kicking award, but he won it when he was playing at Camden. And that it was actually a trip to Fiji. Uh, yeah. Six nights or something. He was looking for yeah. it. Oh, mate, he was looking for it at the end of the year. And uh, <laughs> little did he know, even the Camden Magpies boys were in on the joke as well. So um, poor old Case, he's never let us forget it, that is for sure. Hey, let's go to the uh, the Zoom now and uh, we're going to catch up with one of the real stars of the competition uh, in the top five players.
plays for mine. He is an absolute uh, beast of an individual when he's up and going. He missed the majority of last season, even though it was only 13 rounds, uh, through osteitis pubis. And he's had a bit of a sore wrist the last couple of weeks, believe it or not. He's got the osteitis all good to go, but he returns for the Port Free Seagulls this weekend. Uh, and they are going to be so pumped to have this bloke back. So he can play forward, back, ruck, you name it. He can play it. And I'm speaking Matty Sully. How are you, Matty? Hey, Matty. Hey, Hilly. How are you going? Mate, fantastic. And, and I guess, you know, like, you are going to be feeling really fresh, aren't you, Matty? You know, like, you, you haven't played a lot of footy the last couple of years with COVID and injury and all that kind of stuff. So your body, apart from your little niggly wrist and that, must be feeling pretty good. Yeah, it is. And it's... um. Yeah, it is feeling really good. The legs have felt the strongest they've felt for a couple of years, which is really positive. But um, yeah, I've probably been annoying the bikes in the track the past three weeks. I've just been really up and about, really keen to play. So to finally get to play, like I played that one game last year, but I was still probably hobbling around and wasn't uh wasn't as mobile as I'd like. So yeah, I'm just really excited to get out there with the the young crew that we've got. Hey, mate, I want to ask you, what's the feel around the club like? Obviously. You know, COVID probably hasn't done you guys a lot of favour. I know you've lost a lot of experience and players that, you know, we've been accustomed to call, you know, the Gunnings and so forth like that. You've got a really um, young bunch coming through, some exciting talent at that. How's the feel around the club? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been pretty good. Like, we've obviously, um, like, the Resi's numbers have been, have been struggling, and that's probably because there's been a lot of injuries to the senior boys as well. So, it's, um, yeah... Obviously, it's um, trying times and, you know, you'd rather have more numbers out there. But I think the group has, um, has uh, I think, probably gelled over it a bit and, you know, come together a bit more. You know, you've got Kane as assistant coach and winners and, you know, you can tell they're under the pump a bit and, you know, blokes are pulling out with injury. And, you know, it's, it's been a tough start to the year. But, yeah, as you said, there is a young group and I don't, I can't remember a young group of um this talented individual's coming through Port Ferry in a long time in the under 16s and under 18s. So, yeah, watching those boys play and develop even over the past three games has been really exciting. And I think the key is too, isn't it, Matty, is, uh, you know, a few of you older guys, you know, kind of committing to get through the next few years. Uh, I know it's been tough, um, you know, but it's good to see Sandy Robinson back having a kick as well. Uh, Murkovic comes back. If you, you know, if you can kind of pick up four or five recruits, which, you know, everyone says, oh, you know, they go and get recruits and all that kind of stuff. you got to do it, mate. It's as simple as that. Every club has to do it in this day and age just to get sides out in the park. If you can have a really steady kind of stable off-season where, you know, you, you, your core kind of players commit and you add to it and you get a bit of depth back, um, things can turn around pretty quick, can't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember the, the start of my career, we had probably 17 kids under the age of 20 playing at South and then we, you know, we made the finals the next year. So as, um, as, uh, as you said, if you get a couple of senior boys stick together and you know, develop the likes of these, you know, Oscar Pollock and Ollie Myers and these good young kids coming through, I think, yeah, it does the world a good for their development. And yeah, as you said, it, it doesn't take much to turn around. Give us a couple of names, maybe of uh, a couple of juniors that you know to watch out for. We're looking forward to catching up and seeing you guys on Saturday. Who are some of the names that are exciting to watch? You know, we got a bit of a taste of Oscar Pollock last year and liked how he moved and the way he used the footy. Who are a couple of others that you um, think are you know going to be okay to uh, you know be good players for the Seagulls? Uh, yeah, well, Oscar's probably a standout. He's um, got bigger and stronger over the um, over the preseason. I remember someone tackled me holding the ball over the summer, and I thought, you know, who the hell was that? Well, turn around, it was big Oscar had his big chest there. He was looking good. So he's, um, yeah, Ollie Myers was back in last week and um, he was really good. He's really clean around the footy. But um, look, there's even some kids in under 16s that I hadn't seen much of that played in the practice matches for us. Um, but yeah, that was really good. But look, I think those two, I don't want to start naming names because I'll just forget them all. But yeah, I think um, the development out of those two has been really good the past yeah, three games. Now, Matty, we saw a really impassioned plea from Shawnee Murrahi. Uh, he'd been involved in that football club for as long as I can remember, dating back to the 80s. Um, you know, he does so much. He's on the gate. He's, uh, you know, he's behind the scenes doing Umpires, so much work. Umpires, Umpires. Um, you know, like, and, and, and there's been a post going around during the week. You know, he's just kind of asking for a, a little bit of help. The, the club is, is really desperate just to get some past people back involved in, in some way, shape or form. It's so important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, uh, Sean, yeah, as you, as you saw in the post, but as at the club, you see how much he does and sometimes you scratch your head and think, you know, 
why does he do it all? You know, where does he get the time? But he just makes the time, and, and yeah, he's um, yeah, something that we could all take a leaf from. But um, yeah, it is. It would be good to have more people around the club. You know, everyone's got commitments, but um, yeah. I think uh, Sean and does suppose, need a hand. Suppose, <laughs> He's mate, doing yeah, a game, young know, firing. And, and from someone like you, though, you know, like a bit of an impassioned plea to say, listen, you know, like if, if, if you're out there and, you, you, you know, you, you're watching this or you listen to the radio, you're seeing the social media post, you know, how, how do they get involved? Put their hand up, get them back at the club, get them involved in some way, shape or form because it'll be great to see. Yeah, absolutely. Like the more people around the club, the better. There's nothing better than, you know, going on a Sunday and catching up you know, before the game, after the game in the rooms, like it is a great atmosphere and something that um, we've, we've all missed even last year. I don't think you're allowed to use the rooms, but um, yeah, as Kay said, it's it's just a great community feel. It's, you know, being around the club, you get to catch up with people you wouldn't usually see. So yeah, if people want to help out, just just come to the club and just ask. It's, it's um, yeah, it'd be pretty easy. And one last one, mate. Big game against Cobden this week. And I think as the, you know, let's, let's put aside the North Waterloo game. You know, first game of the season, young side. Um, you've got a few more players coming back over the last couple of weeks. I think some good signs against Tarang. And then last week against South, I think the, the first half was really competitive. They probably might have just got the, uh, the, the second half on their terms. But, you know, I think the, another week, another week together, um, certainly you guys are capable of putting, you know, some good things uh, together over, you know, hopefully four quarters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the, the fitness probably hasn't been there. We started okay against North, but obviously the result is what we all know. But um, yeah, it's um, it's been positive signs to start with. But um, having such a young and I suppose you know inexperienced side, the teams are just running over the top of us. But yeah, it was really there was a lot of positive to come out of South last week, even though we lost by eighty points. But you know, the more that we play together as a side, and you know that we train together, um, yeah. The development over the first three weeks has been really positive and I can only see that getting better. So, yeah, um, we'll be exciting playing against Cobden, another young side. You know, we're not going to go out there and have our kids worry about, you know, getting hammered by the bigger boys. So, um, but in saying that, like Cobden's Cobden, ever since under 12s, they've been physical and tough and, you know, it's always a good game out there. The boys got a good crowd. So, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to play with some of the young fellas and, yeah, looking forward to it. Beautifully done, mate. Looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Great to see you back out in the field too for the Port Ferry Seagulls and the Hand of Football Netball League in general, mate. So great to talk to you, Matty, and good luck this weekend. No worries. Thanks, guys. Uh, good stuff. Matty Sully and Dan Casey. A couple, couple of rivers there, Hilly. Absolutely. Looking forward to that weekend. Uh, this weekend, I should say, uh, it is our Hammer League Live match of the day. Cobden taking on the Port Ferry Seagulls. That'll be on Hammer League Live from 12 o'clock. The live stream will be from 2 o'clock on the 3 or BFM Facebook page. Another one of our great sponsors. Let's have a look at last week's uh, match of the day. And it was the Warnable Blues over the North Warnable Eagles. And Hilly, I don't think, uh, you know, we saw this coming, to be honest. Uh, and the Blues... They were pretty dominant all day, to be honest. They were just really fierce around the contest and their pressure, and that was just enormous. Yeah, and it was led by this fella, Jason Rowan, um, you know, working his way up forward and kicking some nice goals. But I think it was the second term where they really established themselves as a tight first quarter, second term, seven goals to one. I guess they just um, they used their forwards really well, and that long direct play was probably a huge benefit to them. That Not chip, 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 chip. It was more of that long direct play, and, you know, using cowling, using rowing. Rowan and, um, yeah, getting those goals that way. Yeah, just, uh, you know, a couple of young kids for the Warrnambool Blues uh, I, I thought were, were absolutely sensational. One of those being our man, uh, Reggie Mast. Yep. Uh, he, he was absolutely uh, sensational. And young Amon Bradley. Bradley, uh, Radley, I should say. Um, he was just magnificent. You know, like for, for a couple of young kids to go out there and Reggie... You know, like, he, he made a couple of little faux pas early, you know, a couple of bad kicks and whatnot, but he just got on with things. And the other kid, mate, he just competed all day. Yeah, they, they looked like season footballers, didn't they? The thing that stood out for me was just the strength of Warnable's midfield. You know, yeah. Otto Wopperman getting a lot of ball, Jackson Bell getting a lot of ball, Jai Turling getting a Dame lot of ball, Damien McCorkle, Tommy Ludeman probably played a bit of a negating role to a degree as well. And that was a nice mark there by Adam oh, Wines. Nice. But they just had ball winners all day. And Jackson Bell... Uh, sensational game. Yeah, we've been calling 
Warnable for a long time, and I reckon that was probably one of the better games over four quarters I've seen Jack O'Bell play. Yeah, and Timmy O'Keefe was good too, down back for the Blues, kind of uh, getting himself back into a little bit of form as well, which is really good to see. Um, little Jai Turlin, you know, just in and under all day. He's magnificent. And we kind of kept thinking, you know, the Eagles are going to come, absolutely are, but the Blues had all the answers, and uh, full credit to Benny Parkinson and the team. And I suppose the big thing's going to be, look at that for a tackle from the youngster, Reggie Mast. Um, where are the Eagles at, mate? One and two. Yeah, interesting. Um, I don't know. They, they I, just look really flat for yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, that first that game, they carried it against Port Ferry. They, what, they kicked 36 goals and looked extremely strong. But the last two weeks, up against good opposition, three-point defeat against Kuroit, outplayed by the Blues, I reckon, in this game. Um, Good I guess, you know, we can't shut them down because we know how good of a side they are, how well coached they are. They've got a couple of new players in that midfield group that I think yeah, might take a little bit of time just to get themselves established in there. Tate Porter, yeah. obviously Jet Birmingham's going to be a little bit more looked at now with opposition clubs winning the Maskell this year. So, And I guess their forward structures as well with Dylan Parrish, he didn't play on the weekend. And we can't forget that. They were missing a couple yeah. of players as well, but nothing to take away from the Blues. But Vardy's a new player in. Um, and I guess, you know, their entry and that, they've got to get used to the, the supply coming through as well. So it might take a little, another week or two. I'll tell you the player I reckon they're really missing is young James. Sam James, field. yeah. He, he is a ripper, um, obviously playing down the GFL. Um, I, I think they might have underestimated the loss of him, to yeah. be honest, because I, I just think he was that real hard nut in that midfield yeah. and just kind of racked up possessions. You know, then you chuck Matty Wines in there as well yep. with your Jet Birmingham. Um, you know, Bailey Jenkinson now, interesting. Uh, I kind of picked it up late, but uh, Tommy Ludeman kind of played a defensive role yeah. on yeah. Bailey. I think it was after quarter time and did a great job. Oh, a terrific job. He, gave, he gives so much drive and he did on the weekend too. Well, what it allows is, is that you've got Bailey Jenkinson and Luke Wines who are those re- rebounding defenders and they do it so well, North Warrnambool, because they just, they position themselves well and they read the ball yeah. and they play so well. But with Ludeman going with Jenkinson, that was then back to Lukey Wines. And, you know, and obviously, Lukey Wines had to take a bit more slack when the ball was yeah. coming inside Ford 50. So, you know, to the coaching staff of the Blues, it was a great matchup. Yeah, no, it was. It was. Betty Parkinson, the boys, doing a really good job. Travi Graham helps him out now on the bench as well. Uh, Matthews Patron, player of the day, uh, Jackson Bell. Yep. Uh, I don't know how many of these awards he's won over he's the He's won a few petrol vouchers, hasn't My he? oath, he has. He hasn't <laughs> had to pay for fuel for about 20 years, I reckon, uh, old Dinger. Just a great player. Good to see him back in form. Uh, Matt Kohire, highlight of the day, was Damo McCorkle from memory. Yeah, yeah, it was a great smother. Uh, great smother. And, and I think it was, and I think they had actually the play resulted in a goal as well. So it was just those one percenters that I think Warnable did so well. Yeah, absolutely. And the Lucas Brothers snag of the day was Jed Turlin. Yeah. Nice left foot snap. Uh, really when the Blues needed it. Yeah, last goal of the third term. They kicked two in a row. Had that bit of a, um, I guess, a bit of a uh, pump up, you know, towards three-quarter time. And, yeah, terrific goal by Jet... Jet um, uh, Turlin. Jed Turlin. And yeah. the, the pit stop men's were MVP. We'll have a leaderboard the next couple of weeks too. So looking forward to seeing where that's at after about round four or five. Well, I can give um, you the letter at the moment. Oh, here we I go. I can give you the letter at the moment. So it's a South Warrnambool player. Saunders. Yep, Josh yeah. Saunders. He's had three best on grounds out of the four games wow. that he played. So he's on nine He's boats. been on nine. And then there's about four or five players on five boats. There you go. Yep. Uh, Saunders has been absolutely scintillating. And uh, you, would have th- you would think, too, would be uh, you know, accumulating votes in the Maskell medal as well. What about the other results uh, from last weekend, uh, Hilly? Uh, Kuroit uh, comfortably, 31-11, 197, defeating Terrain Mortlake, four straight, 24 uh, what's that, 42 uh, scoring shots to four. Um, and Jared Corrow kicks 10. That's yeah. probably the big story of the game. I feel sorry for Trent Morley, but the same thing happened last year. Remember the Bloods went out there, I think, in round one or two, yeah. and uh, they bounced back after yeah. that. Yeah, I guess, you know, you can look at it two ways. Obviously, it's a huge <coughs> defeat. You know, you can put your head in the sand and go, oh, you know, this is rubbish. Or knowing Ben Kinnar, that he'll take a lot of learnings from it and go, this is the way that good sides play, premiership sides play. So... Let's look at what they do and, you know, we'll work on those sort of things. They'll be better up when they come up this week, you know, against the Warner Blues. They'll be more prepared and they'll obviously, you know, um, look at what they could do better. And I think, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll go okay this weekend. The Roosters, 18-10, 118, defeated Port Ferry, 5-4-34. Josh Saunders, best on ground again. He's in great nick, as we just said. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Probably took the second half for him to really put the Seagulls yep. to the sword, though. Yeah, absolutely. What about this one? Cobden, 14 17 101, defeated Camden 11 9 75. That's a good win for the Bombers. And as we said to Case earlier, it gets the monkey off the back. Yeah, absolutely. Always going to be a tight game. Two young emerging lists. Nighttime footy is not the easiest to play as well. Yep. But what I liked about the Bombers, 
a real spread with their goal kick. It's a bit like a Portland Tigers where they don't rely on that one or two. They rely on six or seven to come into the game and kick goals, and they had that again on the weekend. And then uh, Anzac Day football on Monday, two fierce rivals. Uh, Port Ferry, uh, sorry, Port, Port Ferry, Port Portland Football Netball Club, 14 12 96, defeating the Hamilton Kangaroos, 10 13 73. Close enough contest. It kind of was like this most of the day. Yeah, it took the Tigers the last quarter. So I, and I, I don't know uh, whether there was a wind advantage at one end, but it seemed like with just the scoring it was yeah. occurring. Tommy Sharp, four goals. He's kicked 12 he's out of three kick. games. Um, could be a bit of a master straight by Coach Holt. Yeah. Uh, he's playing some good footy up forward. Uh, Daniel Jackson, best on ground for the Tigers. And our boy Toby Jennings also playing some good footy as well. Yeah, absolutely. What's the whisper? Any whisper on uh, Harris and Jennings possibly? Is well, there... I don't know. You sort of oh, brought no, it just... through the week. I don't know. And I know that uh, they'll, they'll try again, again Bashar Hooley. They obviously said no at the start, but I know Bashar, that they'll have that Bashar conversation Hooley. again. I like it. Wouldn't he be a great Yeah, dude? so I know he goes fishing and so forth. But very busy with his AFL um, ambassador commitments and so forth. But I know they will ask the question again, so you never know. Yeah, wouldn't it be huge? Um, Southwest tool, tool of the week, Hilly. Now, there was plenty, plenty of uh, options on the weekend in their commentary box. Uh, out in the field, too. You know, a couple of young... Uh, you know, I touched on Reggie, just a little kick in, board and a handball. Um, but we can't do that to the young kid because he's a superstar. And I don't want to give it to, uh, to the boys in the commentary box again because uh, they won't talk to us, Hilly. But uh, I thought May race is next week. <clears throat> Got the week off too, um, the following Saturday. But uh, I don't know whether you're up with it, but uh, the grog that's been knocked off. Oh, um, yes. You don't do that, May Race Week. You know, like this is the most important week of the year. Yeah, 60 you're trying, slabs. 60 slabs, you're trying to bowl it over. Um, so we don't know who it is. Hopefully we find out who it is. And uh, their little, uh, I suppose, payoff if they get the slabs back might be the $50, $50 voucher. voucher. <laughs> All thanks to Paddy Lane and the crew out at uh, Southwest Tools and Industrial. Now, did I see that one of the uh, the betting agencies actually put their hand up and said, yeah, we'll replace the uh, the alcohol or the grog start taken for well, uh, very funny one of our racing tunnels? Sports bet jumped on and said, we'll yeah. pay for it. Three grand's worth of grog. We'll yeah. do it. We'll put the hand up. The Warner Racing Club got back on and tweeted and said, hey, listen, we're Team Green, which is uh, TAB. Yeah. So uh, they, that's their major sponsor. Yeah. So uh, TAB ended up putting their hand up. Both of them have got good kudos out of Fantastic. it. Sports Fantastic. TAB. Just a good to have that support that they're, yeah, they're willing to, uh, to chuck in. I did do a story with, uh, with Glennie Scott, who looks after the grog last week down there. But I don't know whether we can run it now with the, uh, with the slabs uh, disappearing down there. But hopefully they can find who it is. But uh, whoever it is, you're our Southwest Tool Tour of the Week. You just can't do that. Could be nearly the Tour of the Year. It could be the Tour of the Year, mate. Absolutely, it could be. Especially, there'll be a story to it. Absolutely, when, uh, when they get found. Because they will get found, mate, the boys in blue. Oh, absolutely. They'll be uh, doing everything. To, uh, to find them, that is for sure. This weekend's round of matches, round four, of course, Caroit and South Warnable, they played on Good Friday, so they don't play this weekend. Tehran Mortlake taking on Warnable. Uh, it promises to be a cracker. The Bloods, they'll bounce back. The Blues looking to make it two on the trot. Yeah, I like the Blues in this one. What I saw, a great sample of football last weekend. I hope Tehran Mortlake can bounce back after a big defeat. You know, you can, as I said, you can either go two ways. You can sort of just... Mope, or you can you know, yep. um, get that growth mindset going and, uh, and be positive towards the week ahead. I think the, uh, the Blues will win, but I reckon Terrain more likely will be extremely competitive. Portland taking on the Camden Magpies. They're doing everything right. Home game for the Portland Tigers. Always hard to beat down there. They are flying. Tigers will be undefeated for mine. Love their brand of footy. Yeah, so do I. North Fondable Eagles taking on the Hamilton Kangaroos out of Bushfield. Big game for the Eagles. They need to just stamp themselves a little bit back on the competition. Yeah, danger game for mine. Uh, Melville Oval, very tight confined. So yep. I think they'll adapt to Bushfield quite well. Uh, North Warner will, will be extremely keen to bounce back. I think they will, but I reckon Hamilton will be very, very competitive. Mm, and a Hamilton League Live match of the day. Cobden taking on Port Ferry down at the Cobden Recreation Reserve. Big shout out to our sponsors, McDonald's, Lindock Living, Sun Gold Power Course, Southwest Tafe. We love what you do. Make sure you're supporting them. Chittix Pies, the official pie of the Hamilton Football Nepal League. Fresher fruit juice. Um, McDonald's, as I said. Um, who else? The Warnable Racing Club. Let's give them a shout out. Good luck for next week, May Racing Carnival. They are one of our sponsors in the Hand and Football Netball League. And that's where our medal counts and all that kind of stuff and our season launches are at uh, down at the Warnable Racing Club as well. The Carter Group as well. I'll tell you what, Carter didn't they look group. fantastic on the water boy look sensational. Um, uniforms last weekend? So Tootie Carter and Karras and the team. Great sensational. Great to see them uh, back in the, uh, involved in uh, the competition too. And you're right, they look sensational, the water boy, the water carriers, uh, the Carter Group, and they do the trees, the toot toot traffic, all that. 
um, which is uh, magnificent. Also, Frolic, uh, they're involved too uh, from a netball side of things. Uh, Frolic Bar, Big Moose McElroy, the crew. So well done to, uh, to all those sponsors of the Hamden Football Netball League. There's plenty of them, and we don't have league uh, without wonderful sponsors. Hilly, looking forward to Cobden v Port Ferry. It's going to be a beauty, mate. Uh, we'll see you at the footy this weekend.